Together, we will investigate Hexenkopf Rock, a location that has been a beacon for paranormal activity and witchcraft for hundreds of years. Hi, uh, I'm Ned Heindel. I'm the author of a book on the history of Hexenkopf Rock in Williams Township, Northampton County. I teach chemistry at Lehigh University, and I live out here in the township on Hexenkopf Road. My wife and I own Hexenkopf Rock, and we are collectors of examples of Pennsylvania German folk medicine and witchcraft. The most famous uh, hill or mountain or rock in Northampton County is probably Hexenkopf Hill, uh, and a rock on Hexenkopf Hill shaped like the head of a witch. This has been a center of uh, public interest for more than two centuries. Uh, spirits are seen, uh, witches are seen dancing. Uh, people comment that when they drive by, their radios suddenly go silent. It's become a, a, a focal point for uh, spirituality, uh, hexerai, uh, and let's say both white and black witchcraft in Northampton County. And one of the features of Browsery is that you remove evil from people by saying the right words, by touching them the right way, by giving them the right potions to rub or eat, but you pull out evil and you send it somewhere. If you send it into the body of another living person for the purpose of making that person ill or trouble, that's called hexing. Right? That's placing a curse in a living individual. But the benign part of this was to remove the sickness and illness and send it some other place, not human. And two families of these Pennsylvania powwow doctors, which is what we call them, or brouchers, is what they're called in German, two families, the Sailors and the Wilhelm, Wilhelms, lived a few miles from here and used Hexenkopf Rock, the witch's profile head, as the spot to which they sent their evil. No time at all, by early 19th century, even the late 18th century, people were scared to death of this rock outcropping because A, it was shaped like a witch, and B, it held all this evil that had been transferred there as a process of curing other people. Come on, Hexenkopf Rock is supposed to be a place of evil. I haven't seen shit yet. What the what fuck was nah, that? No, no, no. Mm -mm. I, I, mm -mm. What the what fuck was nah, that? No. What the what fuck was nah, that? No, no. I don't like that. Was that? The f was that? The f was that? That was like right here. Are there any evil spirits? In a few seconds, we capture an EVP of a spirit giving us a command, and then Ethan feels something touching his camera. You okay? Oh. Go. You okay? Oh, caramba. You right? Oh. oh my god. Oh. Scared the hell out of me. Oh. You. Okay. Me? I think I should put the Ouija board away. I don't know. What do you think? You put it away? I don't know. What oh. do you think? What brought me here was a phone call from David Zukal. David said he had a photo from the Sun Inn that has haunted him for years. In 2017, he took a photo of the main dining area and thought there was a painting on the far wall. However, after his return two years later, he noticed there was no painting and that the faces he saw were in a mirror, a mirror looking into the other side. You can see people dressed in colonial clothing, 
a man dancing with a woman, and an old lady staring at a blazing fireplace. Built in 1758 by the Moravians, the Sun Inn was well known in its time for its excellent food, hospitality, and accommodations. Today, the Sun Inn offers a taste of the past with outstanding food from the Tavern at the Sun Inn and liquor from Christmas City Spirits. But there's another spirit that dwells here because some guests have never left. Hi, I'm Brianna Lawrence and I'm the events coordinator at Tavern at the Sun Inn. So in 1741, um, Moravians established a settlement in, here in Bethlehem. So they had a super booming economy and they had a lot of travelers coming to do business and trade. Um, so they decided that they needed to make an establishment for those um, from outside of the town to come and stay overnight. Um, so in 1758, they began the um, building of the Sun Inn. Um, the Sun Inn was the first inn in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It um, brought in tons of famous people that we would know today, Ben Franklin, George Washington, um, Martha Washington, John Adams, Lafayette, De Marquis, the list goes on and on. Um, John Adams' wife actually has stated that this was the best inn she has ever stayed at. Um, it would, would also take in common men um, upstairs in the attic is where the common people would stay. They would sleep four to a bed, head to toe with their luggage with them. And then on the main floor would have been the suites where Martha Washington would have stayed, George Washington would have stayed. Um, during the Civil War, the Sun Inn um, actually was like a makeshift hospital um, for mercenaries. Um, so up in the attic, they would uh, bring in mercenaries and take care of them, nurse them back to health. Um, also at one point, the basement was a makeshift jail. Going off? There were lights on in both of those rooms. I'm not kidding. Those rooms were lighted. Those rooms, yeah, they were. They were lighted. They're not on timers, right? No. There, it's the. They're always connected to an outlet. I literally just got the chills. Yeah, yeah, those lights were on. Those lights were on. Did you turn off the lights? I think that's a yes. Dude, we were just in here and the things were not, these were not going off. Dude, these are steady now. Where'd you go? Come back. You can come back. Are you in here? Dude, we were just, we just walked out of here and there was nothing. How did these lights turn off? Justin, I don't know. We were they in the don't other room. turn off. These ones are on 24-7, the window lights. That light was there and that. There's a light in the corner showing yes. up in each of those rooms and yes. they are off. Can, can you tell me who's in here with us? Light was on in here too. It's off. 
Is it off because you went to bed? Are you sleeping in bed? Are we disturbing your sleep? Uh, Bree? Look at the bed. Uh, I, Hold on. I'm literally Look at the bed. freaking out. Was the were the sheets ruffled like that before? I don't remember off the top of my head. It looks like someone sat on it. Yes, it does. It looks like someone sat on it. They sat on it like right here. You see that? Yes. I'm pre look how look how the sheets come up from the bed. Yes. Someone's someone's just <laughs> something just sat right here. Look, you can see how it's sunken in. I, right here. I know. The bed was not like that when we were in here. In my thermal camera, you can see Bree sitting in a chair, and as I scan over, you can clearly see a figure in the distance. Uh, let's see what happens downstairs. Can you make a noise for me? Can you close one of the doors in here? Can you turn the sink on? Can you turn the sink on? The following EVP is compelling. Bree, I got something. Visitors and locals alike who drive through Palmerton, Pennsylvania can see Marshall's Hill Mansion looming ominously atop the tallest distant mound of Blood Red Shale. This stately home was built in the late 1800s by General Elisha Marshall for his wife Janet. Rumors of secret passageways, ghosts, and murder have made this house the source of folklore for decades. Marshall and Janet's marriage did not last long due to Marshall's fiery temper. Marshall eventually walked out on Janet, leaving her to live alone in the large house high atop the hill. Elisha Marshall soon died in August 1883 in New York. After her husband's departure, Janet kept herself hidden in her home in isolation. However, Janet was not a helpless woman. One evening when two robbers crept up the hill to her house, Janet fired two shots from her revolver out the window, causing the robbers to flee. According to the townsfolk, Janet was antagonistic towards women and did not encourage any friendships, nor did she allow any visitors. However, 
According to an interview in 1987 with Earl Seep, who worked in the general store as a boy, recalls that she did find herself a very reserved and direct male friend who stayed with her in the mansion. Their unmarried cohabitation was very controversial at the time. Seep says the only people who were allowed to go near the house were himself, the delivery man, and the caretaker of the estate. Later, Janet would leave town to attend the funeral of her brother. She died shortly thereafter of stomach cancer. Due to the secrecy surrounding this grand and highly visible home, many rumors swept the town. Some of these claims include Elisha Marshall being murdered by Janet and her new beau, tunnels under the home, ghostly inhabitants, and that the deep crimson color of the hill is the result of the general's bloodshed during the Civil War. Whether these claims are factual or not, one story remains true. On the summer solstice in June 2000, Marshall's grave at Rochester Mount Hope Cemetery was broken into and his skull was stolen. The groundskeeper is convinced that the skull was stolen for use in a satanic ritual. This grisly development has caused more supernatural stir at the mansion, which is now up for sale. My name is Mike Chess. Uh, I'm the caretaker here at Marshall's Hill Mansion. I've uh, been doing it since uh, November of 2019. Um, I make sure that no one has broken into the house, any damage from weather or whatever, uh, and then if there is some repair. I was pretty excited because as everyone else, uh, it was always a mystery this house driving up past this place, Palmerton, for the past 30, 40 years. They always seen this house on the top of the hill and um, all kinds of stories. So it was interesting to see the inside and what they did to it. Uh, part of being a ter caretaker, okay, I wanted to document everything in the house to make sure no one's been in and anything is missing. So I get up to the second floor, take pictures of the, the beds and everything else, okay? And that was in November of 2019. A short period of time later, I come back into one of my weekly uh, visits to the house and I walk into the bedroom and uh, the pillows were all messed up in the sheets. Okay? Now, everything was closed and locked and I cannot think of any how an animal could have gotten in there. Okay, so I don't know what happened. Can you touch one of us? I give you full permission to touch one of us. As you can see, my K2 meter begins to spike which means there's a presence near me, which I can even feel. Thank you. I just got really cold. All the hair around the Thank you for coming towards me. I can, f I can literally feel the energy coming off of you. Look at all the hair standing up on my arm. You don't have to be shy. You seem like you're uh, kind of looking forward and back away. What temperature are you reading? 76.8. Really? Because when I was when we first came in here, it was reading like 80 degrees. Because it's summertime, it's pretty hot. As soon as the presence came near me, the temperature in the room dropped four degrees. Yeah, 76. When I first came into the house, it was 80. You're not, uh... Yes. Oh, there you are. Just as my K2 meter spikes again, I get a command oh, from the other side. Uh, you're not, uh... Oh, there you are. Drop it even more. No, it's that. Oh, there you are. Drop it even more. 
Who is here? Did we just get Janet to tell us that Elisha is here with us? Who is here? You make a noise and, I, and you have my word, we'll leave right now. On the count of three. One, two, three. I finally get the spirits to make a noise for us. It sounds like something fell. Hi, my name is Cindy Hall. I'm the executive director of New Hope Historical Society. Welcome to the Perry Mansion Museum. So we have some haunted activity here in the Perry Mansion Museum, uh, mostly from the family members that have lived here during the generations. But I think um, the, the most important thing was um, an experience that we had just about last year, this time in September, um, where we had a group taking photographs outside and they managed to capture um, a perfect image in the front window of a very pale young woman with a long white dress on. And when I saw that photograph, I knew instantly that it was Ruth Perry. Um, seeing her photograph um, in the past, the way she wore her hair, the dress that she was wearing, very pale. Um, Ruth Perry passed in this, um, in this mansion and she was just around the age of 20. So she had a very uh, difficult and short life um, with illness. And um, that, when I saw that picture, I just could not believe uh, that they actually captured that when I was standing just a few feet away. It was quite incredible. In just about every room in the house, there's a little bit of a secret passageway that leads somewhere. And some of those um, on this main level lead down to the basement and there's a couple of, um, of those that we see um, that are visible, one in the front corner on the corner of Ferry and Main Street and that is where Dr. George Perry had his surgical room. Um, so that was used, um, we're told, to um, for, for the soldiers that perished, um, that was used and also there was storage in the basement of um, some of the bodies. All of those um, secret passageways and um, crawl space type of tunnels, most of them lead to the basement. So that was probably designed so that um, the family could escape or hide during wartime. So I believe that Oliver um, is seen most often pacing back and forth between the two windows in the room, holding a candle. Um, almost all of the reports that we've received have been recorded that way that he was seen pacing. And um, he's a tall, thin man with dark hair and that's the description that most of the folks gave when they reported seeing him in the upstairs bedroom late at night pacing. Um, it is believed that the reason that Oliver was pacing was that his wife was in labor in that room and um, they lost that child and um, his presence is still felt and seen by many still in that room today. Can you tell me what it was like to have to wait and realize that your uh, baby didn't make it? Right after the motion sensor goes off, I get a response from Oliver. Well, we know you're here. I realize that your uh, baby didn't make it. Well, we know you're here. I just got the chills. Anyone else got the chills? No, but that was pretty great. Meanwhile, our X-cam in the basement captures a series of remarkable events. You hear footsteps get closer, followed by a voice, and then the laser grid rotates on its own.
Back upstairs, we enter the kids' room. If you're over there, roll it back. Can you roll it back to me? Please? I rolled it to you, now you roll it back. Can you roll it over here? I rolled it to you, now you roll it back. Can you roll it over here? Everyone knows you perform surgeries in the other room. Was it difficult to uh, do the things that you had to do? Sorry. Is this chilling voice telling us what they saw when they were a patient? I begin using my SLS camera, which uses LiDAR to detect figures. And very shortly into the surgical room, I capture what appears to be a figure sitting in a chair next to Maggie. Like, it can detect Maggie right there. Detects you, Hannah, just like that. We're gonna see if I keep getting what looks like some kind of figure over right here. I then decide to head upstairs with the SLS. Just before I do, the X cam in Oliver's room goes out of focus as if something walked in front of it and you can hear footsteps. Oliver, are you pacing in this room? Are you standing right over there? Oliver, are you pacing in this room? Are you standing right over there? A restaurant and bar born from a once bustling railroad station built in the 1800s. In 1927, a collision caused a passenger train to derail outside the building. It took hours for the crew to recover the trapped injured and dead. Dozens were taken to nearby hospitals and nine had died. Uh, we're a cigar lounge, bar, restaurant, live music venue right in the heart of downtown Bethlehem. We've been around for a pretty long time and the building itself that we reside in has been around longer than that. Um, specifically, 1868 is when this building was built. The New Jersey Central Railroad uh, came through here. So this was the uh, basically the depot that you would buy your tickets at um, and then board the train. You'll see a lot of stuff, the lights won't work, they'll flicker down there. It's because there was a, a kid down there who got burned to death. So 12.30 at night and you know, on a Wednesday or a Tuesday, and I mean, you're just not expecting to hear anything. So I'll always hear like the noise of like a pool cue, and you'll hear like against the floor, like you'll hear like, and you'll be like, oh, someone's playing pool up, oh, and then everyone will stop. The wooden match promises to be a paranormal hotspot like no other. We'll uncover the secrets of this charming yet haunted location where paranormal and history collide. Maybe we can get you to sit in one of these chairs. Come on 
Let's sit and have a little, uh, little chat. Ooh! Ooh. That's going. Is that one of your favorite seats? Hey, hey, welcome to the chat. Sit and have a little, uh, little chat. Ooh! Oh, yeah. Sit and have a little, uh, little chat. Ooh! Oh, yeah. This EVP came through just as the motion That's sensor going. went off. Is that one of your favorite seats? Hey, hey, welcome to the chat. Meanwhile, in the basement dish room, our motion sensor camera captures something startling. The photos it captured looks as if something moved directly in front of the camera as the photos are blown out. In the video, captured glowing eyes in the reflection on the far glass. Well, if there are any spirits down here in this basement who would like to make contact, please do so. Jordan is about to hear a spirit give me a response. Well, if there are any spirits down here in this basement who would like to make contact, please do so. Is that one of you? No. So rumor has it that a little boy burnt to death down here, is that true? Is the spirit of the little boy who burnt to death down here? Can you come near us? Let us know that you're here. Make some kind of contact. Oh, I can't hear the mic hand. Oh, there it is. And you can grab it if you so choose. Stand here. Jordan just got touched, and a spirit confesses. I just felt a tug on my sweatpants. Did you really? Are you standing over by Jordan? We're going to back up carefully because we cannot see down here. Stand here. Yep. I just felt a tug on my sweatpants. Did you really? Yeah. Are you standing over by Jordan? We're going to back up carefully because we cannot see down here. This is the SB7 Spirit Box. It channels through 10 to radio frequencies per second backwards. And we're going to see if we can get a response with a constant stream of white noise. Are you a man or a woman? Standing over here next to us. Did you say I know? I think that just said I know. Mm -hmm. I heard I know. And you were just standing over here next to us. That just say I know. I think that just said I know. I heard I know. Are you a person who worked here when it was a train depot? Because it was a train depot downstairs and now it is a bar. Do you consider yourself to be a patron of the bar? 
You're a patron of the bar. All right. Do you consider yourself to be a patron of the bar? Yeah. Oh. Job Anna. <laughs> okay. You're a patron of the bar. All right. We've seen some photos downstairs um, of some people sitting on the roof, which is pretty cool. Um, the girls are getting intense spikes on the K2 meter as they ask direct questions. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so cool. It, it just Not, goes. Yeah. Well, if you're still here. How about. I have been told that there was a crash nearby, ooh, of a train, and I was told that people passed away in that train crash. Is that how you died? I the chills. <laughs> this is pretty wild. Um... I'm Mark. And I'm Carrie. And we own Sleepy Cat Urban Winery. Um, we're at 1840 West Allen Street in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Over the past eight years, we've actually had a few paranormal experiences here. Um, in the basement area, I've seen shadow figures kind of walking past the doorway that I'm in, so. I wouldn't believe this if I were you, but I actually did see a ghost cat in the basement. Uh, we're talking and I heard what sounded like a cat meowing right in my ear. Um, I literally saw a black like figure walk by, move the light, like a part of the light was gone. It is kind of a creepy feeling down here. It was 11 o'clock at night. It sounded like somebody was coming down the steps. It's creepy, it's creepy. So I stayed down here and labeled, and I, not even like two minutes later, I saw a figure that looked like him, like literally walk past that door. How about the other table over there? There's all kinds of devices over there. Can you can you touch something and make something go off? Is there a cat over here? Hear I, 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 I'm not lying. I, I swear to God, I hear purring. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> very faint, very faint, but I swear I hear Okay, purring. cool, cool. Now who's with us? The purring that Mark heard was too faint to pick up. However, we're about to capture our first EVP that validates their experiences. Nothing to be afraid of. We're all, we're all friendly with cats. I was like, just really a really sweet cat. One of my photo sheets, somebody had a really sweet cat. Nothing to be afraid of. We're all, we're all friendly with cats. I was like, just really a really sweet cat. One of my photo sheets, somebody had a really sweet cat. Well, this is where I've seen my experience of looking out this door, so. I wasn't expecting him to be there. I was like, oh my god. Look, yeah, it's right here. You still smell it? Mm hmm. Yeah. It's very strange. Because that, mu that, that musty smell is like very strong down here, but over here it's not. You, sh you smell that light, that light scent of, yeah. I don't know, it's like clean or... I heard footsteps. Where? Ooh. Right after I said this is where I've had my experiences. Ooh. Seemed like it, it was... Like footsteps, it sounded like on the stairs. <laughs> Are you in the stairwell? Dude, dude, dude. Well, this is where I've seen my experiences looking out of this door, so... I wasn't expecting him to be there. Look, it's right here. Is this not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very strange. 
Look, it's right here. Is this yours? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very strange. So Mark and Carrie left, and now it's just three of us in here alone. It's just two. It, what's, wait, what's their name? Team, Timu? Timu. Timu. Like the app? <laughs> I think it was before the app, but I, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, do I ask about it? Or is that like a dick move? There's Sedona. There's another one named after something in Arizona. That's, I think the name, Phoenix. Phoenix is one of the cats. Oh, apple. Ooh. Yeah, there's the one. Right by those freaking bathrooms. Mm-hmm. Bad vibes bathrooms. Apple. Ooh. Yeah, there's the one over right at the... Those freaking bathrooms. Mm-hmm. Bad vibes bathrooms. Okay, someone's walking over here. My cat loves when I do this. You know, I wish the other, the other ball would go off. Come on. You can play with us. Come on. Attack my hand. You know you want to. Like they're cat fighting. Oh! Ooh. That fucking worked. It's definitely a cat. I think it's definitely a cat. Come on. You know you want to attack my hand. One more time. You know you want to do it. See? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's definitely a cat. It's gotta be, but I want. I see. Ball as soon as I start doing this with my hand, come on, come on. After getting some activity from the ghost cats, we head back down to the basement. Holy shit! Okay. All right, well, we know you want to come near Jordan. Is there a reason? Yeah, is there a reason? Yeah. You can tell us. Ooh, the reason. We're just here to talk. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in this basement forever. Right. Like, this is not very cash money in the place to stay. Hello again. Yeah, that shit is really going. Well, we know you like Jordan. They always like Jordan. You won't come near me at all. Hello. Are you trying to make come? What does he want to tell Jordan? Oh, I hope that you hear something like. Are you the butt grabber? Was it an accidental butt grab? Yes. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, you know, not everybody's. We respect it. Yeah. How was it? Nice butt, nice, nice butt. Butts are butts are butts. Can you slap Jordan's butt? No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is this the... over there? I just heard something over there. In What'd you hear? Car. Yeah, over there. What'd you hear? Um, yeah, right behind mumbling you. And now my oh, holy out. shit. <laughs> yeah, I just heard mumbling back there. Oh. Yeah, There's is something this... over there. I just heard something over there. Yeah, is something this... over there. I just heard something over there. What'd you hear? Yeah, over there. What'd you hear? Um, yeah, right behind mumbling, you. and now my Oh, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, I just heard mumbling back there. Oh. Okay. Now, we had some activity down here before. Obviously, Jordan's K2 meter is going off. We've heard some. Yeah. And as soon as I mention that it goes off, come on, what the fuck are the chances? Bruh. Cool. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. Can you just tell us why Jordan's the lucky one here who's getting all the attention from you? I'd really like to know. Me too. Can you just tell us why Jordan's the lucky one here who's getting all the attention from you? I'd really like to know. Me too. Alright, you literally have one minute left. Let me see if I can get 
being pretty quiet now. Oh. Every time I say that. So I don't know what you want from us. Yeah, I don't know what you want from us. Unless you just want, unless you just want Jordan down here by herself. Bro. <laughs> it's a little too dark down here for just me. It's a little too dark down here for just me. Well, what do you think? Should we call it a wrap? Yep. Yeah, let's call wrap it up. Come on, I really want another noise. <laughs> come on, that. come on, I just want one more yeah, thing. Goes through with it. <laughs> one more thing. Made noise for us before, I just want one more. We'll go, we'll go. The second you make the noise is the second we are out of this basement. Release me from this basement. Can you knock on one of these doors? Right, I'm gonna knock, okay? Hear that? Knock on a door for me. Can you do that? One more time. Knock back, okay? Knock back. Any last things you wanna say? Just uh, stay here, don't follow us home. No. Lord, when I say thank you. Thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. Do you hear that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any last things you want to say? Just uh, stay thank here. You. Don't follow us home. No. Well, Lord, when I say thank you. Thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. Do <laughs> 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 you hear that? Do you hear that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. We made a promise. We made a promise. You did. Right? Okay. We made a promise. Thank you very much for making a noise. Thank you very much for giving Jordan so much attention. Thank you so much for scaring the shit out of me. Okay. We're going to get out of your hair now, okay? Yeah.